today. Next day, last night, this is another thing about CNC router. Boom and boom. So I've done a trade study. Uh, the options that I laid out, whether I replace the bars uh, or do the baffle, what I call the baffle solution here, because uh, they are kind of like baffles. We're gonna go with the baffle solution in the trade study. This ends up actually being the less expensive solution. Even when you consider we would still thermal mold the tank and then we will have to weld these pieces in after the fact. We have these materials. They're obviously already cut and we're gonna put them in place today. There's a forward bulkhead and there's an aft bulkhead and we are gonna plastic weld them into place. I was considering doing uh, just these cross members and that quickly disintegrated as a good idea because that would only have two inches of weld on each side and now we're gonna have, this one is 12 inches, the other one's like 16 inches of weld on double side. And of course we have 500 pounds of uh, force uh, pushing out on each side of the tank here. I also like the baffle idea because we could use it in the future to actually create separate tanks within this tank. Uh, what I mean by that is sometimes when you're growing aquaculture like shrimp or fish, you don't want to mix different um, generations in one tank because the older generations eat the younger generations, you know. Uh, you will learn that with rainbow trout real fast, they'll eat themselves. Uh, if they get too hungry or if they're just bored uh, it's like a little bit of a sport for them by putting these baffles in here we could actually create structure where we could attach like screens and stuff to separate different ages of aquaculture species bringing even more value to this reservoir the bimodal reservoir as i call it because it's bimodal because it could be hydroponics only or it could be fish aquaculture so uh, we're going to do that we're going to weld that in now, uh, but before we get going on that, because time, time is everything here, um, we actually, on the base, we've had to change where some of the electronics go, and uh, we're going to put them in the back now and expose, so I need to go into the office and do some SolidWorks uh, work, and then we're going to put it on the 3D printer so that while I'm doing this work, the printer's going, talking efficiencies here, right? Uh, this is how we have to do these things. Um, when I'm working here, the 3D printer will be going. When I'm doing the fourth static load test, uh, which I think this time we're going to pass. The thing will be printing, preferably by the time I'm done with the static load test and I drain the tank and I get the base back inside, we'll actually be able to um, start going up. Uh, we'll be able to take the, the stuff off the 3D printer, put it on the base, and uh, the base will be done officially at that point with exception of the programming of the computer, which I still have to do. But then we can start going up. We can put all the grow decks that are over there Reservoir, grow decks, and then I have to build the light deck and we can plug it all in and see how it works. So, let's get going. While I'm working in SolidWorks, one of the things I've learned the hard way is I really need to take better care of my filament, right? So what you're looking at here is the filament that I'm gonna be using. I wanna go with a black profile, see how that looks. Uh, and this is a dehydrator. It's made by MagMill, it's a food dehydrator. And what I've learned is you really, really want to dry out your filament. You gotta keep it dry. It naturally sucks up water from the environment. Uh, and once it gets wet, it creates popping, snapping, holes, bubbles uh, in the print and ultimately leads to a failed print. Uh, that's one of the reasons we built this whole office is if you remember, it's like the general reason why we did it is we needed to one, have a, a place that's relatively clean for the 3D printer and two, we needed to have our dehumidifier, which has got us down to 22% relative humidity, as well as our heat pump. So there's kind of a standard temperature in here and humidity, which allow the, um, the quality of this very expensive roll of filament, it's like $300 worth of filament there, to uh, stay good so we can use it. So I've got it in the dehydrator while I'm working on SolidWorks. While I'm working out here, one of the things I've really come to appreciate is having an audio, audible book. I've been listening to the uh, Expeditionary Force series, which is a way cool sci-fi series. And the, uh, the reader, R.C. Bray, is just awesome. The author is Craig Allen, Allenson, I think. And his humor is very enjoyable. It's very snarky. Uh, and I know a lot of snarky people. It's fun listening to this. I'm snarky myself. And uh, it kind of, it just, it's, a, it's really cool. Uh, it's fun to listen to and it gives you something mentally to kind of zone out while you're on SolidWorks. My wife, she really liked those earbuds that I got. 
So now I had to take my uh, wired earbuds that I used to use to work out with and I bring them out here and I just make sure that it's clipped onto my shirt here. So when I'm in front of a machine, it doesn't grab, but I really prefer my other wireless earbuds. So here we go. Okay, total lapse time, five minutes. We're ready to go to the machine. And now it's time to cut. Let's see how close we are. Bingo, nailed it. And one minute later, it's updated. So what we're gonna do now, create a little bubble that goes over this in CAD and uh, It'll just screw on what I'm intending for the first one, and we'll be good to go. Back to SolidWorks. This looks good. I got it loaded into Simplify 3D, and we are now uploading to the printer. We'll see how this prints. Uh, one of the hard parts about coming up with part, long-term parts, not like temporary solutions, it's actually been about two hours that I've spent on this is thinking of the manufacturing and how, you know, are you gonna print it? Are you gonna injection mold it? What are you gonna do? And for us, we have 3D printer. Injection molding allows you to do some different things in 3D printing as well, because you can get some molds put in place. Um, but I'm trying to minimize rework, because <laughs> there's only one of me. So uh, I went through and I thought about it and I came up with a solution that I think is gonna print okay, and I also think will be able to be injection molded. Um, so let's go to the printer and see it get started. So here we are at the printer, and uh, it's laying down the outer perimeter of the print, which just helps clear the nozzle. Um, I did a material change. I went from the white to the black, so I cleared that out myself, and now it's just making sure that everything's good. The printer's been leveled, and it's automatic leveling. It's all been set and uh, calibrated, so I'm very hopeful <laughs> that everything is going to print okay with this. It's going to be kind of a complicated print that requires a lot of accuracy on the printer's part because it's going to be a sixteenth of an inch wall thickness. The nozzle is just a little bit smaller than that. It's going to be close. It's actually, you no, know, the nozzle is about exactly a sixteenth of an inch. Just, it is literally just a little bit smaller. Uh, so we'll see how it does. This particular filament's always been a problem for me. It tends to gunk up in there. So we'll see how it does. All right, here we go. I got both sides welded in. A few of them I had to use a few extra sticks on. These are not welds we want to have fail. They definitely connected uh, for sure the heat that I can feel still, and it's cold in here. Uh, coming from them shows me that I definitely penetrated into the main side. So the compression obviously is not what we care about. It's the expansion. And it looks like we're gonna be okay if the welds hold with this. We should see. Hopefully not much deflection. Little extra material in these, maybe a sixteenth, you know, an eighth inch total, a sixteenth on each side. Maybe I could have shaved off 
but all in all, uh, I'm happy with it. So we got plenty of room for fish to go through here and to go back here as well as down here. And then as I was saying, one of the things that might be really beneficial for this is that, you know, we could put actually screens on these in the future, you know, a few screws and some screening, and then we'd be good to go. And you could actually separate and have three chambers. In addition, it is essentially a baffle system, so the water isn't gonna be able to shift around and slosh as much. So uh, I'm gonna let this cool completely, and then we'll do the fourth structure test. And uh, if all goes well, the welds won't fail. We'll pass the test and get on to the rest of the construction. There's no way you would have ever lifted the base and the reservoir of the version ones. Daisies blooming, sundress swaying in the breeze. We've already done three static load tests and water retention tests. This will be no longer water retention, but it will be just simply the static load test where we're looking for deflection. We've added our uh, cross member the baffles, if you will, into the tank. And in theory, this should hold. Uh, probably the biggest factor that we're gonna see here if it does fail, will be my welds fail. That's the thing that's been added that's new. Uh, and then we'll be looking at deflection. So let's get the water going. Do a little more by the book today. Go in mid span, 22 inches at mid span. And I'll mark that. Mark it. That just right. Baffles in there. Get a view. I can't even get that view. That's what it looks like. You see, there's going to be plenty of room for the fish to swim around. Okay, about one third. We're still holding at 22, at one third. That's great news. And this is looking good so far, knock on wood. When I'm reading off 22, just so you know, it is designed to be 22 inches wide. Uh, so we're actually holding at our design parameter and we're still at 22, which is great. This one is a little, right here, it's a little bit, 22 and a 16. This one's a little more too, but right at mid-span, which is the worst spot, it's 22, so I think we have it. Maybe a little warpage there in a tank. 16th isn't much. Yeah, and that goes all the way back here. So yeah, that's just at an angle, small angle, 22. That's 22. Oh, that's because I was on the ah measure. Got to measure it right. Okay, we're about an inch away from the top, and at this point, before whoa. At this point before, we were already touching the sides. Uh, this one is touching over here at the mid-span. It is definitely not touching, however, where the welds are at. So we might need to put a third baffle in. Let's look here, here's the mark. We're still holding at 22 here, and by the time I get back, we'll be at the mark. All right, we are at the full fill line. And measure is 22. It's 22, 22. A little bowing right there, but I think that's actually not bowing. That's the tank itself, and that's 22 there. So what we do have is the middle of the tank still does touch right here and here but it's not bad at all in fact not bad at all let's get the lid yeah that's it a little bit of divergence here but again i think that's tank uh that is actually that is totally the tank where's my so there's a little bit of white coming out here, but that is actually, what is that? That is uh, a quarter of an inch 
coming out that is plastic that has to do with the tank itself and how it was put together. So that actually needs to be trimmed down to match. So that is not a Boeing problem. And over here, this one actually lines up very, very nicely. I think we got it, guys. I think we got it. That is a hard deflection that I can't really measure right in the middle. So this little line of white right here is actually needs to be trimmed back. That's not because of the filling, that's because of thermal changes. Here you can see how we have convex there, or concave, excuse me, and then it's convex here. If I were to put a third baffle right here, then we'd be okay. But notice there's still gap in there when I push my finger on it, which means we don't have, there's actually no pressure on that cross member at all. Over here, it's the same thing. We have the concave, and then we go convex back to concave, and this actually does have some pressure on it. <clears throat> so we are getting some pressure here. So we could put a third baffle in if we really wanted to, but I don't think we need to. Right now, this is looking great. That one little convex section that's poking out there on both sides, I don't really think it's gonna be a huge issue, and we certainly don't have the deflection that we had yesterday. So this solution is good. Like I said, it actually adds some features to the system, so that's nice as well. So far, this design is turning out to be pretty good. Some things here and there, new techniques to learn. The plastic welding is new, actually, and the CNC machine, I'm looking right here at how I accidentally had the depth set wrong when I cut this piece here and I cut through. I actually need to clean that up. I also need to put cross members in here because this uh, plastic has uh, deformed slightly and it's kind of bowing down and it's not supposed to do that. I have cross members this way, uh, but I didn't put them in this way, so I need to go fix that as well. With the tank now uh, retaining water and with it passing the water retention test here, oh, we need to do the WAC test. So the WAC test, which I did in a previous video, previous test, is simply introducing unplanned source of force into uh, the system, making sure that the system can react to uh, an unexpected force. Now I'm not beating it, you know, that's, <laughs> if someone's sitting there just really beating the crap out of this thing, that's a, that's a different story altogether. But what I'm trying to do is introduce vibration and shock. And this is, uh, by the time it rotates through, is probably about five pounds. <laughs> I'm gonna stand back because if it does fail, I'm gonna get washed away. <laughs> so we're just introducing shock. said it's probably about five pounds of force and we're just seeing how the system reacts definitely have a bow out there as well but it's not touching that's actually working perfect so so far we're not seeing any negative reactions and actually with the new baffles in the water doesn't even really move in there i don't know what would be creating a force like this someone dropping something on it but when you have the decks on, it's gonna be pretty freaking hard to drop anything on this. So, all that said, includes uh, static load testing for Grow Tower version two, and we're gonna move on to the rest of the assembly now.